Hey guys, this is Brian Sykes with the AI Lab. Um, I want to introduce you to a product by my friend Andres Zvaner. Uh, he's the co-founder of Catalyst AI. And this is still a product that's in production, uh, but this is a really cool tool that's able to optimize the time uh, from pitch to pre-production to actual production and a great asset for creators who are kind of walking through a concept. Um, you can find them on LinkedIn. Uh, it's Catalyst AI, and you can see some information about them. So I actually want to walk you through how to use the tool and see if this could be an asset to you guys. Okay, so I've already got a couple projects underway with Catalyst, and what I want to do is walk you through exactly how this process works. Once you've got an account and you're signed in, you come in to this area, and it's the Catalyst AI. It's where you can start a new project. So I'm going to click on Create a New Project. We'll give it a name. And underneath here, you've got options of going with either a sketch format or cinematic. And cinematic, of course, is going to be renders that are much more photo realistic, uh, where sketch is just going to be black and white line drawing. So this is a pretty neat aspect. Then the other thing is the aspect ratio. There's three default options, which is the 16 by 9, uh, a square 1 by 1, or a 9 by 16, which is your tall uh, as though you're kind of trying to create something for uh, a TikTok or something like that. And I'm gonna try something a little bit different. So I've been doing 16 by nine, but I'll just play around with a different f format altogether. So I'm gonna go with a cinematic 916 and idea and choose create. Now, when you're at this spot, you've got a couple different options. One is to import a script as a CSV. This can be kind of challenging for me because I tend to use a lot of commas in my writing. But if you were to set up a script in a um, like Numbers or Microsoft Excel, then you basically have each individual line uh, that's breaking up the flow of what you're trying to communicate. And so you could choose this as an option. And that's one, I haven't actually explored working with this because that's not how I work. Or you can just simply start with create an empty project. And when you come into the project, it immediately starts with basically think of this as panels almost like a comic strip uh, so each of the panels is where it's going to drop in a visual and it gives you the option of click to generate the visual and the script well we need a script to tell what it's supposed to be generating you have to have some kind of idea in mind of where you're going with this because basically your script is you're painting the visual picture of what it is you're trying to create and once you've got that in play then you can click to generate a visual so Let's actually come up with a quick idea. The best place to begin your exploration, especially for something so last minute as this, is with ChatGPT. So I jumped into ChatGPT and I started with the simple conversational point. I want to create a simple script for a time traveler who is able to make her leaps through time via futuristic smartwatch. Okay. I want the story to start with enemies breaching the lab where she works and design this watch. And it is in this situation that she tries the watch for the first time. The strange thing about this watch is it jumps to a place and time based on what the wearer is feeling. Her first destination is high adrenaline, perched in a precarious spot because of her emotional state. So she has to calm herself in order to make the next leap to a safer spot. Can you craft a basic storyline around this idea and provide the summarized outline as simple as possible? Okay, so from this, ChatGPT is going to deliver basically an three, four, or four act piece with a resolution or epilogue uh, that we can use as the basis for creating our simple presentation. So as quick as this, I now have act one, the breach. In this, we've got a context for our story and we can use this to write our script for uh, our catalyst. So act one, the breach, setting, and I'm gonna do a little bit of visual break up here. Now, it doesn't really matter if I'm putting those spaces in. This is more for me. I like to visually break up things so I can see it. I can come down also. Uh, I've got visual characteristics and traits, quirky traits. These are some other things I can kind of play with, but for now, it's good enough. And then I'll just simply click to generate the visual. Okay, I could spend a little more time going into the detail of what the lab looks like or what Dr. Alara looks like. I want to focus more on the storyline so we can kind of get a, a basic gist of what things are going to be like. We can kind of go back and refine this as we move forward. This is really more the sketchy idea, the way to kind of put together a basic presentation so people can see it. And as you can see, queued for generation simply means that this has been 
load it into the system, it's in the process of rendering out the visuals based off of the storyline that I've given. Now from this, you'll notice to the right, it says create a new frame. When I click on this, it basically opens up another panel where I can place a script and tell it to click to generate visual. So I'm gonna take act two for sleep, go ahead and bring this over, and I'll set this up the same way I did the first go round. Again, these don't really matter to anybody else, but for me, I kind of like to break things up. So because I can't come in here and choose bold or italics or change colors of things, then this is just a way to visually separate things up, make it easier to read. And you'll notice down at the bottom, it now says Nicole. The reason it does this is there's some already pre-trained models in the system and those models are basically the visual references it's gonna to use to create the characters you have in your story. So this is a really nice feature because what it's gonna do is that becomes our basis of this character everywhere else and it's gonna maintain some consistency. Okay, I'm gonna jump back into my projects list while this is still rendering out. And you'll see that I've got several other projects already underway. And I wanna walk you through how one of these things looks as it's actually been put together. So this is a retro futuristic daydream sequence. What you'll see is each of these is there is a statement, something created that is my prompt. It renders, it's got two things beneath. It shows me first the setting and then next is the main character. So in this case, agency office is the setting, Daniel is my character. So every time I'm in that setting, I can reference the agency office and Daniel, and you'll see these two are very similar. Even this one here, it's very, very similar. Um, and actually, this one is supposed to be down here. So you're able to grab these and rearrange things uh, inside of the application. So we can restructure and now we've got our storyline in place. As you're working with things, uh, one of these in for particular is you're able to go in and say it creates a render and you're not really thrilled with what it creates. There's an edit button and I can click on that and it pulls up where it shows you uh, the picture that was originally created. This is the originating prompt and down below is creative direction. So you can refine the description you're using for your shot. You can choose the angle of the shot, which is just like adjusting where the shot's being presented from. Um, you've got several different options here. Top down shot, straight on shot, and low view shot. Okay. And then you also have the type of shot, whether it's a close up, medium, or full. And then with creative direction, you basically are refining, giving more detail to the particular render being created. You've also got your different settings. So agency office or retro futuristic space, retro futuristic hair salon, I can create new. And that becomes a consistent based presentation um, where the scene is taking place. So you can create those. This is where it's defined what the retro futuristic scene is all about. So you can refine that statement. And when you do generate, you'll see that it creates multiple images and this one was having a hard time understanding what I'm looking for. It really focused heavily on the drone, where my focus was on the dogs uh, with the drones and the idea of the drones walking the dogs get tied up and you end up with a pile of dogs. And it didn't quite understand that. It gave me lots and lots of drones. And so this is the challenge of working with anything is getting it to understand specifically what you're trying to create. Lots of images to choose from that it generated after multiples. Um, and again, you just end up going with the one that works the best what we're trying to do. Once you've got the one you like, you come up here and choose the, the arrow and that selects that item. It's almost like when you're looking at the pan or the multi-shot inside of your iPhone or your smartphone and then you choose the one image of that multi-shot that you like. It's a similar fashion. So if I click on this one, you notice that this is not greened out, but this one, when I do, it is. So one that's selected, I can just go back to storyboard and there's my presentation. Okay, so here's the cool thing. We now literally have a way to present. Uh, I can click on present, and what it'll do is it will show me in sequence, you'll see down below, those all represent the different slides that make up this story. And it says opening, agency brainstorm session, a group of creators in agency setting, make a standout ad for a new innovative product. 
there's our setting, there's our character, the storyline has been established. When I do my arrow keys, it moves in sequence to the next or the prior image. Um, so here we can kind of walk through our entire story. And we're back at the beginning. Okay, so this is kind of a cool way to do a presentation. You can download this presentation uh, or you can actually copy the link and share it with others so they can see it. Um, I prefer being able to actually work from my images and arrange them and present them because you could take this uh, and do other things with it. There is the option I could turn this into a video mode. Uh, and when you request a new video, there's a cost of $650. Uh, with a number of 13 scenes and it's turned into a visual. But anyway, I wanted to let you guys see what Catalyst is about and how you can utilize this tool. Um, be sure and check with LinkedIn uh, to see uh, the platform and the link below uh, for Catalyst app.catalyst.ai and sign up for a trial view of this application and see if this is a tool to be a resource for you guys. That's pretty much it. Thanks.